In this section, we're going to learn about finding the antiderivative. So this is the introduction to the antiderivatives. Our learning outcome is find the general antiderivative of a given function, explain the terms and notation used for an indefinite integral, and state the power rule for integrals. So the notation we're going to be using here is a is that uh, f stands for the derivative, lower f stands for the derivative of something, and capital F is the antiderivative. So we could say that capital F prime of x is little f of x. And so when we try to find capital F of x, that was the function before the derivative was applied to make the lowercase f of x. So a function capital F is an antiderivative of the function F if capital F prime of X equals F of X for all X in the domain of F. And our general form of an antiderivative, let capital F be an antiderivative of little f over the interval I. Then for each constant C, the function F of X plus C is also an antiderivative of F over I. If G is an antiderivative of F over I, there is a constant c for which g of x equals f of x, so that's capital G of x equals capital F of x plus c over i. In other words, the most general form of the antiderivative of f over i is capital F of x plus c. Now, when we take that derivative, the derivative of the capital F of x is that little f of x, and the derivative of the c is just zero because it's a constant, so that's why you don't see that derivative that c and when you're looking at it, little f of x. So let's uh, take a look at some antiderivatives here. So we have f of x equals 3x squared. So think about what happened to this to make it a 3x squared. What was it originally? So our capital f of x, and remember we, we bring that power out front and we subtract one from the power. So that power out front is a 3 and then the power would have been, now it's a 2, would have been a 3. So it's going to be an x cubed plus c. The next one's not that straightforward because it's something that not everyone's necessarily comfortable with, but it's f of x equals 1 over x. And if you recall, the what has a derivative that's 1 over x, that's the natural log of the absolute value of x plus c. Got to make sure you do the plus c's. Now think about what has a derivative that's cosine of x. Well, the clue's kind of there that we use a cosine of x. And that antiderivative would be sine of x plus c. And here's the fun one. The f of x equals e to the x, so our capital F of x is what? If you recall, the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. That means it's its own derivative and it's its own antiderivative. So it's going to be e to the x plus c. Now it's very possible that c was zero in all these cases, but we have to account for that. So we put a c there. In the next section we'll have initial conditions that we can look at that we can then find what <clears throat> the what the c was. So find all antiderivatives of f of x equals sine of x. So think what has a derivative of sine of x. Well that means our capital F of x now, cosine of x has derivative of negative sine of x, but there's no negative here. So if we said negative cosine of x plus c, <clears throat> its derivative would have been the negative of the negative sine x to give us the positive sine x. Here's another one. We have f of x equals 10x to the 10th plus 10x to the third, minus 6x cubed, minus 7. So our capital F of x is going to be what? So that it's a 10x to the 10 now, so it was x to the 11. So 10x to the 11. And if we were taking that derivative, that would have come out front. So we don't see it, so it must have had an 11 down below. They canceled with it. Plus, then we have... 10x to the, that's a 3, so it was a 4 of 4, and we would have divided by that 4, minus 6x to the 
Oh, I think I have a mistake here. That's supposed to be a five. So this is a six divided by six. Six x cubed, it was cubed, so it was to the fourth. We divide by the four, minus seven. It doesn't have a variable coefficient, so it must have just been x to the one, plus some c. And we can simplify this a little bit. We have 10x to the 11, 10x to the 11 over 11, plus five, Uh, x to the 6th over 3 minus 3x to the 4th over 2 minus 7x plus c. That's it. Now let's talk about the concept of indefinite integrals. What we've been doing has technically been indefinite integrals, but we just haven't done the format that, is, uh, that we, we, we tend to follow, which will lead into indefinite integrals. So here's an example of an indefinite integral. This this looks like an elongated S here. And it stands for an infinite sum. So the integral of f of x dx equals capital F of x plus c. And here's the formal definition. Integral of f of x dx is the most general antiderivative of f. If capital F is an antiderivative of f, then you get that capital F of x plus c. The stuff inside is the integrand and x is the variable of integration. That's actually important, especially when you have multiple variables inside. So let's look at something else here, another rule. So notice in each one of these, when we have integral of an x to the n power, we go x to the n plus 1 and divide by that new power. And that is actually the process for um, doing basically polynomials. So here's the formal rule. Integral of x to the n dx equals x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 plus c. And the key to it is it does not work for n equals negative 1 because if you recall the integral of 1 over x dx is natural log of the absolute value of x plus c. So just remember that. So here's a, a really important, um, it's not a comprehensive or exhaustive list, but here's a list of uh, derivatives and their integrals. So just keep referencing this as you need to while we're doing these problems. Um, and these really interesting ones like this, one over the square root of one minus x squared, one over one plus x squared, and one over x times the square root of x squared minus one. Those are important. I think this last one shows up in the homework. So be aware of that. Okay, it says uh, each of the following statements is of the form integral of f of x dx equals capital F of x plus c. Verify that each statement is correct by showing f prime of x equals, sorry, capital F prime of x equals little f of x. Okay, so in this case, our the first one, our capital F of x is x squared over 2 plus e to the x plus c. So our capital F prime of x would be 2 times x to the 1 over 2 plus e to the x plus 0. So just x plus e to the x. And that is indeed what we have here for our f of x. So that works. In our second case, the capital F of x is x e to the x minus e to the x plus c. So our f prime of x, we have a product rule in the beginning here, is going to be 1 times e to the x plus x times e to the x minus derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Derivative of 1 is 0. So what do we get? We just get x e to the x, and that is equal to our little f of x. And I forgot some notation here. That is what I needed. Okay. So it worked. Another one here. 
verify this situation. So we're going to take the derivative of the x sine x plus cosine x. So if I said capital F of x is x sine x plus cosine x plus c, capital F prime of x is going to be 1 times sine x plus x times cosine of x plus, and the derivative of cosine of x is negative sine x, and the derivative of c is 0. So I see a sine x and a negative sine x, so those are going to cancel out. <clears throat> so our capital F prime of x is x cosine of x, which equals our little f of x. So it works. Okay, we have some properties of integrals to look at here. And they are that f of x plus g of x. The integral of that is equal to just capital F of x plus capital G of x plus or minus, I should say. And if you have a constant multiple, you can factor that out and then integrate and then multiply it by the result. So the idea is you can split up your integration into smaller integrals if it helps. Okay, evaluate each of the following indefinite integrals. Okay, for the first one, we're going to have, so that's going to be 5x to the 4th over 4 minus 7x to the 3rd over 3 plus 3x to the 2 over 2 plus 4x plus c. That's it. Next one, I like to, and I suggest you, there's one like this in the homework, I suggest you do this. Treat this as the integral of x squared over x, because you have a single term in the denominator, plus 4x to the 1 third over x dx. So that's going to be the integral of x plus 4x to the negative 2 thirds. And let's see what we get from this. I see an x squared over 2 for the first term plus 4 times x to the so neg negative 2 thirds plus 1 is 1 third over 1 third plus some c. So I get x squared over 2 plus 12x. I'm going to say 12 times the cube root of x plus c. Okay, how about this next one? So this next one fits into one of those formulas. And this would be like saying that 4 can come out front and you have the integral of 1 over 1 plus x squared dx. And if you look back at the formulas, the 1 over 1 plus x squared, I told you to pay careful attention, that is a tangent inverse or a, a arctangent, if, if you will. So that's just going to be 4 times tangent inverse of x plus c. That's it. And then this tangent x cosine x dx, I would write this as the integral of sine x over cosine of x times cosine of x dx. And the cosine would divide out. And it leaves you with the integral of sine x dx to give you um, well, again, what has a derivative that's sine? That's going to be a negative cosine of x because cosine has the derivative of negative sine x, but there's no negative there, so we have to include that negative. Okay, moving along here. Here's another one. Evaluate 4x cubed minus 5x squared plus x minus 7. So that's going to be 4x to the 4th over 4 minus 5x cubed over 3 plus x squared over 2 minus 7x plus some c. 
So it doesn't clean up too much, but it becomes x to the fourth minus 5 thirds x cubed plus x squared over 2 minus 7x plus c. That's it. Got a couple more here. This one didn't print. It says integral of x to the negative 8 times x plus 1 dx. And what you're going to have to do is multiply that through to become integral of x to the negative 8 times x plus x to the negative 8 times 1 dx. And so you end up with integral of x to the negative 7 plus x to the negative 8 dx. Now if you apply these rules, that becomes x to the negative 6 over negative 6 plus x to the negative 7 over negative 7 plus c. So that becomes negative 1 over x to the 6x to the 6th six minus 1 over 7x to the 7 plus c. That's it. Okay, one more to do. We have actually two parts of this. A, integral of 14x to the 13 dx. That's going to be 14x to the 14 over 14 d uh, plus c, which equals x to the 14 plus c. And B, we have the integral of quantity x squared plus 11x plus 18 dx. And that's going to give us x cubed over 3 plus 11x squared over 2 plus 18x plus some c. And we can't really clean that up at all. That's about it. Okay, hope you enjoyed that section. Next, we're going to be jumping into initial value problems.